Just how much growth are you expecting in 2021 with a, with a vaccine? What kind of pace of growth can we expect in 2021 if we get a vaccine halfway through the year? Good morning. Good morning. Well, uh, thank you for having me uh, on the phone this time. Um, but look, uh, first of all, I, I have to say that I'm really, really proud of my team, uh, how, how fascinating we've been finishing up our fiscal year with a very strong fourth quarter. That sets a good base, obviously, uh, for 21. Although, uh, and you're absolutely right, you know, we've been a bit cautious uh, with the outlook, given you know, the ramp up of the second wave all over the place. And with global supply chains and customers who are in the capital goods investment business, you know, you need to have uh, people be optimistic about the future. So that's why we've been a bit cautious on the outlook, obviously. However, now with the vaccine coming along and I think also some political stability uh, pending in the United States with a two trillion um, infrastructure program, I'm actually reasonably confident, you know, that we've been through the worst and that, uh, and that we can look into growth opportunities again. So that's why we said uh, moderate growth and, uh, of course, uh, then the earnings conversion into profitability. And then we'll uh, see what happens going forward. I want to pick up, Joe, on what you call political stability. You are the head of this massive German industrial giant. You've been at the table with President Donald Trump. What is your perspective on what is going on right now in the United States? We have a president-elect Joe Biden, but President Donald Trump is uh, launching uh, legal suits. I mean, what kind of volatility do you think this brings? Well, look, this is a matter of the American people, and I'm sure they're going to get it right um, uh, one way or, or the other. I've been, uh, you know, meeting with President Trump. I've been uh, meeting with uh, President-elect Joe Biden, um, uh, and both have their, you know, their moments and uh, and, and their good things. Let's uh, let's assume that uh, Joe Biden uh, will, you know, eventually come into the White House. He's always been a big promoter of sustainability, and if I'm not mistaken, one of the things he uh, was saying that on the day of his inauguration. He would actually look for the United States uh, rejoining the Paris Agreement, which I, I believe is a fascinating uh, uh, signal to the world. And that for us means that renewable energy sustainability will be uh, up on the priority list, which is, I believe, good for Siemens. The other thing is that he wants to look into more public transport rather than, uh, let's say, private uh, sector transport, which, again, you know, would obviously be something on sustainability, but also a big plus on us with our mobility and smart infrastructure businesses. And then two, two trillion in infrastructure, you know, is a big opportunity. So if that is getting carried out, at least Joe. for the most part, that will offer big opportunities for us in the United States. Well, let's just carry that thought forward, Joe. I know that, you know, early next year, you won't be joining us as the CEO anymore, but Roland will sit into your seat. You've met Joe Biden. You know where the opportunity, value opportunities lie in America. Where are they? And will you encourage Roland to buy businesses in the U.S., to, to grow the business again in the United States of America? Is that your message for transition? Well, the message, the message for transition is that, first of all, we've got a great transition going. He's been my man uh, all along, and uh, we have a great uh, transition, which is different from, you know, the, the last two ones, which were a bit bumpy. Uh, secondly, I think we together, Roland and I and the whole management team, we have been setting up Siemens now into three big, powerful companies, Siemens Healthineers, but in America, energy. Joe, are you uh, going to encourage him to do more deals in America? Are you going to encourage him to do more, deploy more capital in America? I mean, he, he'll be the CEO. He needs to find his own way. But I would, if he asked me on an advice, I would tell him, go organic. Don't buy because we've got a lot of opportunities for organic growth. Joe, of course, the world has faced a lot this year, the pandemic being the biggest. What needs to be done to make sure we are building back a stronger global economy post-pandemic? Well, I think one, one thing would be on the political side that the, the big underlying conflict of the two super powerhouses uh, of China and the United States gets a bit more predictable and there will be an understanding on how to deal with each other in terms of global trade and global trade rules. I think that's the most 
relevant topic to ease the minds uh, for people investing into the future. That's very relevant. The other topic, uh, I believe, is that um, there is an understanding on the transatlantic um, European United States uh, uh, development going forward. That will help the companies in terms of expanding the productivity and innovation on the, on the supply chain. So those are very relevant topics which, you know, polit politics can help us with. Other than that, the companies, they need to push innovation and localization. That will definitely come. We do see the decoupling uh, developing uh, between, let's say, the United States and China and friends, whoever the friends are on each side. And that decoupling is a very dangerous thing uh, and can only be maintained uh, by, by further localization. That's exactly so what our company has been doing over the last decade. Joe, we just saw the EU um, level uh, new tariffs on the United States of America. That is the welcome present for uh, Joe Biden to deal with. What do you make of that move? Was that a signal of intent that we're not just going back to the status quo, that it's not going to be an easy ride for Biden and Europe? What does it signal intent from Europe? Well, I think the, 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 the signal and the intent of Europe uh, should be, I know, I'm not sure what it is, but should be that you are willing to play, but you want to play on, uh, on equal footage. You know, we want to play uh, by the same rules uh, as, as partners together. And that should be, that should be the signal uh, which the U.S. should understand. Europe needs to find its own way of a joint economic foreign policy. It's hard enough with 26 different countries, but that should be the signal. Europe and the U.S. together, they, should, they could lead the world for, for a modern WTO agreement. And then I'm sure that we find China to follow suit because the three of them are the right ones, you know, to direct the future.